Any advice for, for people who want to go on their first climbing trip or road trip? Yeah, um, I think in a group setting for first out climbing, like going climbing outside is like really, really key. Um, just thinking the sense of safety. And so being able to even get to have a plus one in the car makes a big difference. I think planning out everything is is crucial, as we all know, planning ahead. But like there's like even that extra step of planning where are the sundown towns? And like when we were talking about um, say that again, the what towns? Sundown towns. So these are towns that like when the sun goes down, if you are black, brown, queer, trans, you don't want to be out um on the street because people yeah are racist homophobic and like will do things this is why the green book was created um which is like a traveling book for black folks that were created in the 1930s and um and so yeah it's now we're in what 2023 so these are still things we got to think about of safety making a plan so having gear that's going to help you make sure you stay in contact with people because you're going to run into areas that you're not going to have service so having like a garmin um gps system it doesn't even have to be the super fancy one it could be the baseline one where you can like set up unmet text or have people follow your like your travel so they know where you are if something happens even having your phone set on that that's what i do all the time when i travel by myself or if i'm traveling with a group and i know we're going to be in a space where you won't have um, access, like uh, service. Um, but then also recognize too that there's so many, um, the way that social media is, it's like reaching out to people. And so that's why we created like the Brown Girls Climb app. If you, if you wanna go traveling and you wanna go on these really grand like climbing trips, reaching out to your community and being like, hey, I'm gonna be in this area. Would anyone be down to like climb, co work? meet up i would love to like get introduced into the space um we'll also kind of set the tone of safety too so that way you know that you're going into a town where someone's gonna be like oh yeah i'm down to like meet up or i'm down to like climb i think is is something key you know i think we often put a lot of fear which is like it's you know fear and that makes us want to not do these things and so it's a lot of just trying to figure out how can we like make sure that we are keeping each other safe and supporting each other through these like ways of traveling and wanting to be in nature, wanting to experience climbing in different areas. And so I would always say if you're, yeah, traveling with more than one person is extra crucial. If you're someone that's traveling by yourself, I say reach out within the community. If you don't know anyone in the area, and maybe, uh, yeah, ask and say, hey, is there anyone that I could like climb with? Or if you know anyone that would be down to be like someone that I could have my van in their driveway for a bit or their car or like knowing a hostel or area that's pretty safe for like black or brown or queer folks to like come and stay. I think that's like the extra research to do. Um, so that way you can kind of set yourself up a little bit um and obviously no not everything is going to be perfect but i think going through those lines will will be a little bit easier to to navigate like yes safety but also know there's community folks so many community folks who are want us to get out there and are willing to support in that process and making sure that you're able to travel and get out and connect with other people I think that's a good lead into your road trip. I would actually love to hear about your road trip to Bishop in Vegas. Why did going on that trip feel important to you? Why did it feel important to you to do that? This was like in my mindset of going to these amazing climate spaces and then being able to connect with communities, specifically when women of color in these climate spaces that are their home crag and have these conversations around the climbing community, the industry, what is happening what changes do they want to see and being able to bring that those voices to light and um yeah i pitched it to patagonia and they're like sure let's do this and i was like oh okay <laughs> uh so i got like a an escape van so i was van lifing it for a, a hot minute but i think what was really amazing was being able to connect with a lot of these folks um, and hear their vision and passion and kind of 
seeing them still like i'm still connected to some of the people that i've interviewed and watching them blossom in the industry and finding their voice and talking about the ways of like understanding that climbing is inaccessible to most people but also this is what i'm trying to do to create that change this is the changes that i want to see these are the things that i want to like that i've navigated that i'm hoping that other people don't have to navigate and i think being able to create a kind of like a story and also really sharing out the facts about the climbing um industry was just something that i wanted to do and have it be from a perspective too where it wasn't so trauma riddled like oftentimes these stories are very like trauma riddled and so i wanted to find that balance like yes we can talk about these really hard issues but also let's talk about some of the joys and accomplishments that these women of color are doing and or working on whether it is community work but, or it's like their own personal goals of like trying to send like a uh, 13 in red rocks or things like that and so i wanted to kind of have like a nice like rainbow perspective of who's actually out here climbing and what it's like for them mm. It, it, let me ask this question. In hindsight, hindsight's always twenty twenty. What do you wish you had known when you were first planning the trip? Learning the passages that flows for the season. Because I flew into San Francisco, and I, in my mind, I was like, I'm just going to drive through Yosemite, and it's going to be grand. And not understanding, like, <laughs> right. no, seasonally, roads close in Yosemite, and you're going to have to drive all the way around. And so I thought I prepped myself, but I did not prep myself. I'm kind of chuckling because I've been shut down by that exact same thing before. I'm like, oh, now I have to drive over to Nevada and all the way back around to get, I'm trying to get to Washington. Yeah, it's brutal. <laughs> I think maybe I would have like had better equipment in, in long sight. I think for me, it was also learning the, uh, the talents that I was going through. So though I did my research, I felt like I didn't do my research enough where I would probably pinpoint in more gas stations that I would stop at versus like during gas stations that I stopped at and got a very like, what are you doing here? Mm. And you'd be like, where are your bathroom? <laughs> and just going in and out really, really fast. I think those were kind of some of the key things that hindsight, but for the most part, I planned it pretty well in the sense of like how I was gonna travel. I think recognizing too, though I picked out camping spots, I did not camp in most of those spots that I picked out because I was terrified. And so I had a friend that actually was staying in Bishop in like one of the hotels. So I actually camped out in the hotel parking lot because mm. I knew like if anything were to happen, their room was like right there versus like going to like the camp spot uh in buttermilk it's just so illuminating to kind of see it through that lens and to think back on my trips down to bishop in the middle of winter you know coming from bellingham washington or later from bend oregon or whatever all these tiny little rural rural towns along the way and um i've never had to plan any of that stuff you know like that's that's a, such a massive privilege and um feels really huge and really obvious hearing it contrasted with with your experience mm -hmm.